What is going on guys? Welcome to week number two action of our Big 12 All Team Builder Dynasty. We're kicking this one off with the Ardmore Thunderwolves against Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. We are going on the road to Georgia Tech. They usually wear their white uniforms at home, or so you have told me. So we have they elected do. to go with our home uniforms in blue. But it's not going to bring us any good mojo here, as you guys can already see that the offense for Ardmore is just kind of not moving the football in that first possession. So we give the ball back to Georgia Tech, and per the usual, Ardmore's having some tough time on defense. Yeah, no, this is a different look offense for Georgia Tech. They hired Jeremy Pruitt, who, as we know, is now at Tennessee. So they're kind of running kind of a pro-style kind of mix thing, but the triple option is no more at yes. Georgia Tech, so they're kind of in transition mode. They got these triple option kind of athletes, people that are used to doing things one way, and they're kind of, they have to adjust to something else. So this should be right in your wheelhouse. Hopefully. You should be able to handle this. I struggle against option teams, so it's actually a very fresh thing that I'm not going to be able to, it's a relief. It's a relief is what I'm trying to say, that I don't have to play against a Georgia Tech team that, you know, would usually give me problems in the past so we can see that the offense now is starting to kick it into gear but look at DeQuandre shook that little shake and bake that he had on that linebacker he was making him dive at air so really good run there and now the offense is starting to kick it into gear here as we see J.R. Fuller with a nice reception down the sideline and then firing it to D.D. Foreman and what a catch even better throw oh, I don't know yeah. which one's better right there because Foreman had to keep both feet in bounds and Shanahan had to put that ball right where it had to be. Otherwise, it could have been picked off. I'm not even sure what you saw right there, but Didi Foreman will fumble this football. Did he complete the catch, though? I guess that's the question. And uh, Check out the replay. Gonna... Oh, yeah, yeah, he I made a football move. Definitely so. did. Yep, so Ari Moore yet again with another turnover. It seems to be a regular thing right now uh, early in this season. We didn't really turn the ball over a whole lot last year with Cade Wilson. So for whatever reason, it seems like this new quarterback situation might be the type of ball that he throws. I don't know, but we can see here that it doesn't matter what kind of ball he throws because this one's going to back to the defense. We got an interception here. The A route was wide open, and he just didn't get enough arm strength on it to make that throw complete. So we, hear, we get here Brad Stewart for this score. So it's going to be a tie ball game here, 7-7. Seven, seven mid part of the second quarter so now we're going to jump to the late part of the second quarter here with three minutes left and lynch is going to get in there for a touchdown it's going to be 14 to 7 now georgia tech and we are dangerously close here to getting into a situation where we're going to be losing at the half for a second straight week yeah it seems to be a recurring thing with your teams play action know. pass here to from Shanahan to oh. Ryan Markham, the backup tight end. Nice catch. I didn't know that he really had that in him. He's more of a blocking tight end, but here's J.R. Fuller. We're starting to get those two tight ends a little more involved. Nice really, catch in traffic. Really liking Fuller in the early yard. Yep, and then here's Kevin Tratnick with a nice pass there by Cody Shanahan. So he's kind of bipolar of a quarterback. He makes some really weird throws, and then he makes some really awesome, accurate throws. Second and 10. And here is a pass complete, and we are going to have what looks to be like a face mask. This this is a pretty weak call, because I did not see any face mask on that play. So Roosevelt McKinley is not penalized a whole lot, but he's going to get that penalty there. <sighs> Smoot cannot make the tackle. That was Howe at linebacker. Probably should have been covering that, that curl route. And he's going to come in on the blitz, but not going to get there in time. And Dan Gibson gets a touchdown. So Georgia Tech... Gets that score. Going to be up 21-14 to 14 at the half. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, Thanks. This is a pretty evenly matched game in the early going, so we'll see if your offense can get in gear. Like I said, I mean, your defense needs to step up because this Georgia Tech team should not be humming on offense like this. You mean buzzing. You're right. Here's Jake Wood. Oh, Jake Woodson. So no Chadwick Wim Wimberly as the backup running back. So yet again, he's still in, in the doghouse. Dog but there is a big fumble there. That's, Wood falls on it. Thank God for Jake Wood. Otherwise, that would have been going the other way. Things might have been getting really out of hand there. But uh, that was all Cody Shanahan's fault. Yeah, in my opinion. This great catch by Josh Thomas. It's a great throw. He threw it right into. He, he just dropped it right in the bucket there, right in between three defenders. So we get Clinton Lynch. 
for a first down for eight yards. Second and one here at about the 15, a little bit above the 15 yard line there. Two yard catch for Clinton Lynch. That's gonna be a first down. Third and three now, Hill Parrish trying to get in there and look at this, a incomplete pass. He dropped the touchdown, an easy touchdown. So they kick the field goal, gonna be 24 to 14. Complete pass there to Didi Foreman. Had a very nice release on that route. Second and seven, Shanahan firing deep, deep to Ransom, who's gonna make the catch. 43 yard bomb, second and goal, and a blocker in front who didn't decide to block. Hmm. That was Jenkins. Jenkins. Jenkins, and a touchdown there to Shanahan. So he gets in for the score, oh, and then look at this that? pass. Duarte picks it off, spins, breaks the tackle, and he is going in for the score, guys. Ardmore takes the lead, 28 to 24 here, mid part of the fourth quarter. Duarte with the huge interception, a clutch interception right there. Third and eight, Jordan and Georgia Tech have to get down the field, but nice little stunt move there. Vinny Hill Parrish went to the inside, Guerrero took the outside, really good teamwork there on the defensive line. Pass complete here to Didi Foreman, who's gonna stretch across a line for a first down and then no no oh. no Shanahan no an interception on the screen pass just take the play just take that play out of your playbook never works second interception for Cody Shanahan and then we get a false start on Georgia Tech so they're going to be pushed back to second and 15 after this penalty so they're starting to shoot themselves in the foot here we gotta make sure that they do not capitalize and get a first down here or else we could possibly lose this game we don't want that to happen third and 15 now after a throw out of bounds and jordan feeling the pressure and mccullough wow. almost let the first down happen he didn't even jump for it he didn't even try to deflect it but fourth and 15 we got a little bit lucky there and mccullough guys is going to step up and make this pass deflection and guys, Ardmore is going to take care of business here. Down in Georgia, yeah, we're going you, to get a nice W there. You escaped here. I mean, this was not a very easy game at all. Got the big play on defense. It was enough to get the W for you. I guess you'll take it again. We'll take it. Another lackluster win. I'm not impressed, but we'll take it. The, the one thing I am impressed about is that, that late interception. That's what I'm impressed about. Yeah, so here we're going to check in. We're going to go mid first quarter. Next game up is top 10 matchup, NC State at McAllen. You guys are going to look at the Matadors. This is their uh, debut here for the 2018 season. We see Marcus Rodriguez taking over at quarterback. A lot of familiar faces, though, on the rest of the offense. Yeah, we got Carson Jackson, Mar Marlon Malloy Jr. We Dustin got Weber. Dustin Weber, Barrett Love, Harris McMillan, Bonaventura at tight end. Yep, so a lot of a lot of similar guys there. Ryan Finley, though, the quarterback for NC State, trying to uh, get a big road win here. He's a top. He's one. He's been talked about as one of a top uh, quarterback going into the 2019 NFL draft. So yeah. McCallum's. Definitely got their work ahead of them. But yeah, how about that hit by Elroy Palmer the third though? That was something else. But Rodriguez here goes down. Big sack. So, I mean, you guys look here. I mean, this is mid-second quarter. Not really much in the way of offense going on in this game. But Rodriguez is going to float this one outside. It's Weber. And he gets pushed out. It's going to be fourth and one. And now they're going to go conservative and punt the ball. So Finley here scrambling a little bit, gonna fire it deep. Oh. He's got his man there, and the coverage was they were going for the pick, but Maurice Trowell for 60 yards, and Finley is now 13 of 17. So this is a pretty big game for both teams. Six versus eight, two quarterbacks in the high 90s. Yeah, they're definitely wanting to put their best foot forward here, and Barrett Love. Eh, you know, nice catch, but didn't put his best foot forward because he stepped out of bounds. He was wide open down oh. on, down the sideline. Here's a deep shot. Ah. Incomplete pass. James Valdez with the deflection. So McAllen will have to give the football away. They're going to get it back, though, late in the second quarter. And this is Carson Jackson's first reception of the game. You're right. Late he was in invisible for Rodriguez in the early going. Good to see him finally get involved. You see Barrett Love there out of the slot going to towards the sidelines this one going deep 
Carson Jackson. Catch is made. Unbelievable. This guy is nuts. I love him. I love him every week. Not? Every week I watch this guy. He's just nuts. And we get a flag for a offside penalty, but Marlon Malloy is in, so they will decline this penalty. It's going to be 17 to 13 at the half. A good response drive for the Matadors. It's good to see him get on the board with a touchdown finally. I mean, a high-powered offense like this should not be struggling so hard, I don't think. I mean, I, I thought this game would be a bit higher scoring myself. Got to utilize Carson Jackson a lot more than what they have been. And look at this. It's shaking off a tackle is Rodriguez, but it's going to fire deep to Carson Jackson. That's Malloy. Oh, sorry. Out of the backfield. I'm just used to it. Number 42 makes a big catch. He's got 60 yards. Yeah, that's pretty solid. I mean, Malloy, that's one of his best skills there. You see here, this would be uh, Rico Gathright for no gain. Fourth and goal, You, why are you flipping it out of the backfield? Don't know. I don't know. they got to settle for a field goal. It'll be 17-16. Oh, that's really bad tackling right there just to let him in there for a first down. Second and 10 now, and Finley going to the sideline. Nice catch, catch there by Harmon. Great catch by Kelvin Harmon. Mr. Wolf loves it. Yes, he does. So it's going to be first and 10 here. Three and a half left. Finley going down. That's Good a big sack. sack there. Good stuff by the Matador defense. Finley, though, third and 13. And we get a hold. It's awesome. Good job by the secondary. The secondary has not really been on their game so far. Field goal but. attempt up here, and it's not going to be good. Just a little bit short. So McAllen, like you said, they hold. Yep, and Rodriguez goes deep. <laughs> there we go. There he is. There he is, Carson Jackson. The speed burner. To the house. 66-yard strike. 299 yards now for Rodriguez. And, guys, Carson Jackson has now taken over this game. Oh, yeah. I mean, he has the ability to do that against anybody. Any team he plays, you line up your number one corner, he's beating him. He will beat him in a foot race. Yep. So he's you got to love that. Burner. Got to love it. McCallum, though, here we go again. Down the field, inside the 10. You get Malloy for a seven-yard touchdown. McCallum, they, I mean, they look like they're in control right now. 31-17, late third. NC State needs a response, and they oh, get it. no. Busted coverage here. Tomlinson makes the tackle. Too late, though. It wasn't Tomlinson's fault, I don't think. Yeah, but this guy, Trowell, has burned him twice now. Yeah, Trowell, I don't know what is going on there. He's having a whale of a game here. And Rodriguez, I don't like that call. I think he got to throw it, but he gets stuffed. Another possession here. Now it's third and 13. Oh, nice catch. Oh, no. But a fumble. You kidding me? Wow. So Barrett Love makes a beautiful catch. What a great throw. He dropped that one Everything in the bucket, too. Everything was perfect too. about that play except for the finishing kick. Oh, right my there. gosh. Wow. Okay, so fumble. Oh, terrible, what in the world? terrible tackling right there. Aaron Collins is going to pick up the first down. First and 10. And now Finley is starting to get in a rhythm here. You see two first downs in a row. Second and one, and he's going to keep it himself. Takes a big knock, wow. and he's going to get a touchdown. So this game is now tied, guys, after that fumble. Things were looking really good for McAllen until those last two drives. Oh, pretty gutsy throw there by Rodriguez. There's Paris McMillan with the catch. First and 10 here, 335 left to go, and Rodriguez trying to escape the pressure. He does not. It's going to be a 90-yard sack, so it's going to be second and 19 right now. We got trips to the left. We're going left. There's a pass complete there to Dustin Weber for 12. So that's a really good pickup. Sets a manageable sets up a manageable third down, third and seven. And this pass is going to be complete, oh. but he gets one inch short. So they're they're going to kick the field goal, and we give we got a penalty here. It's a false start, which is not what you need when you're already thinking about a long field goal. So we, they said on the offense, so we don't know who it was. I think it was on the uh, protection on the line. And, of course, Coronado just misses the field goal. you got to have those five extra yards, man. You can't just give, up, give away field position in that situation. Yeah, that's going to be big. So, I mean, man, Elroy Palmer having himself a nice game, but he's got that one busted coverage on his resume for the game. So, NC State, I mean, time is winding down here really late, and they're calling timeouts. But yeah, NC Very State is calling timeouts right questionable now. questionable play calling right here. Why would they call a timeout? And they call another one on fourth down. 
to stop the clock in gotta, 19 seconds. You have to kill the clock, not stop the clock. I, what? I mean, what in the world? So they give McAllen, they would have just won the game at one second. Right, yeah, you let it run down to three, timeout. But now they're going to let Carson Jackson try to beat him here. So you know it. Here's Rodriguez fire into, that looks like, is that love Lead again? Better. Love oh, better. Nelson, so, love better. And McAllen, fighting. they got all three timeouts right now. 11 seconds. Rodriguez out of the shotgun going deep. Nice Fine. Catch. Carson Jackson for 27. Now here's another questionable play call. McAllen wants to kick the field goal. They got a second, or a timeout with six seconds. The field goal goes up. And it's oh gonna come on, be come on. short. Are you kidding? It's me? gonna be know. short. Oh. It hits the goalpost. No. Why are they calling a timeout if they just ran? If they ran a run play to get a, another extra two yards? Look at this. Look how close that was. They needed every inch, and they refused to run a play with six seconds. You gotta try something. That's a t that's terrible coaching. Brock Musselman, coaching. what's going on, Brock? Not good. So, I mean, that is a that's a big loss for the conference. I mean, we needed. I mean, we don't need a big one. We got a couple on the resume already for our conference. But man, I mean, to, to drop this game, first game of the year for the Matadors, that hurts because we're talking up, we're pumping up the Matadors this year. We're saying they can really make some noise. They're gonna just have to come back from this t heartbreaking loss, man. That's all there is to it. Yeah. So we're Saddle gonna up. we're gonna go to a game here with a little less in terms of national stakes. You know, Odessa State going on the road to San Diego State, and as nice as weather as San Diego has, it does rain there once in a while. So this isn't like I've played games in this like in Utah, El Paso, where and it's, it's raining. raining. Yeah, San it's Diego like, does get some rain, so this is I'm fine with this. Okay, so Odessa State, we got. Montana Flynn, the quarterback, kind of a, I mean, he's he's up there. I believe he's a 96 overall now. Yeah, he's a 99. He's a 99? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, Montana Flynn, I mean, he's looking to go to the pros. He's thinking about declaring, decided to come back. Odessa's a team that lost their final nine games, I believe, yeah. Yeah. last season. Yeah, they won their conference games and then, yeah. Their just... non-conference, yeah. They, they just yeah, right. totally just disappeared after a couple of, tight conference losses at the beginning. Good to see them off to a 2-0 start. And this is another game. You know, if they want to get to a bowl game, they got to win this game. They gotta, they're got playing some freshmen, getting them in the mix. Uh, most of the offense is back, though, so uh, defensively is where you're going to see some new faces. So Miguel Machado, not one of those new faces. I liked how uh, on that drive for Odessa, how yeah. Flynn looked a little more comfortable, and he actually was – he he just looks better this yeah, year. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he's making some good throws like here. Like that. He would not have made that throw last year. Probably not. And I think that's what the NFL scouts are really that's liking about. Right there. That's a strike to Khalid Livingston for a touchdown. That's a beautiful throw. He's 5 of 6 right now. Yeah. So right now, I mean, the completions are there. I mean, making – Good throws right on the money, down the field. It's what they like to see. Here's Christian Chapman. Pretty solid quarterback in his own right. I don't believe he's an NFL prospect, but he gets the job done. Aztecs, I mean, they're, this is an underrated football program, in my opinion. I think they're really solid top to bottom every single year. It's only underrated because we're out east. We don't hear a lot about out west. Type yeah, you might be right. You might be right. So San Diego State gets on the board here with a touchdown. Flynn, though, really not having any issues moving the ball down the field. There's Brock Skinner. He's having himself a game right now. 21-yard gain right there, second and nine, and Flynn can run a little bit. Oh. He's going to actually bust off a tackle right there. Another in the, one. The end of the first quarter. He's still up. They he's couldn't, still up. They couldn't get him down. And Montana Flynn, interesting thing about him is he's got pretty nice – uh, running capability too, but here's a new face. Uh, we saw him in the recruiting, Rhett Sutherland, who we moved to fullback. You don't see Odessa really utilize their fullback very much. No, but they like they like his ability to pound the rock. I guess. Oh yeah. So it's good to see you know one of the recruits getting in, making some plays. See the defense stepping up here as well. San Diego State though going deep, and they got wide open. Look at that catch by Isaiah Macklin. Wow. What a catch! That yeah, is. that was pretty dang good. <laughs> he might have. I mean, he probably could have 
underthrown it a little bit. Yeah. He didn't have to make that much of a But look at this catch. Khalid Livingston. Livingston. Ooh, for 33. I want to see Kyle Rivera. I have not seen him try to make a, a uh, big catch here yet in this game. Obviously, Skinner and Livingston are kind of like the guys right now that I think Flynn feels really comfortable with. So, this is an interesting game right now. It's seven points. We're trying to, you know, they're feeling each other out a little bit. Good to see Odessa move the ball, though. 35 seconds here, and just trying to get into some field goal position. Don't turn the ball over. You, I mean, yeah, you want a touchdown here, but, you know, settling for a field goal is fine, too. I mean, you're going to be up 20, you're going to be up 10 at the half, which is still a pretty good situation if you're Odessa, because you haven't had any problems moving the football at all today. Yeah, so we get the field goal. Up by ten. Okay. What do you I, what do you what do you think about I, this? I game? like I like what I'm seeing out of Odessa and you know, honestly I've been I've been dogging them for a good year now. Why and wouldn't you? I think did I pick I think I picked San Diego State in this game to win. So I'm actually like hurting right now uh, when I'm watching this, but I'm actually feeling pretty good though too, because it's good to see Flynn and this offense start putting some things together here he looks more comfortable the defense is actually playing well they've got an influx of young uber talented players mm -hmm. you know they're high 60s you know they're going to be pretty good in a few years so it's just a matter of them gelling and growing together you're right and here's logan sweeney good running back good receiving back really cannot get him going so as much as we're talking about odessa i mean san diego state's right there in this game, Jawan Washington goes down. John Miller, I believe he's a new face. Yep, that's nice. his very CPU-generated generic <laughs> name. So we can safely assume that John Miller is a uh, is a freshman this year. Third so, and three, yeah. and we have a complete pass. Nice catch by Brock Skinner there. He's stepping up as a primary target. And then, oh no, the Whoa. rain. The rain. Finally comes into play here with ball security. First turnover of the game in these conditions. And Montana Flynn, we're talking about his running ability. you got to protect the ball, though. We were just talking about how he's been comfortable and how he's been looking good, and then all of a sudden that. That's yep. a very Odessa-like thing to do. Classic Odessa. I'm going to dog him yet again. Yeah, so here's Chapman going deep, and he's oh. got his man. Yeah, classic Odessa. Isaiah Macklin with another big catch. I'm feeling pretty good about my pick now. Okay. <laughs> Second and seven here after Jawan Washington. Unable to get uh, a, a big chunk there. And then, oh, go! Touchdown. There we go. Wow. There we go. I, why am I rooting against a team builder team? You should never. Christian do that. Chapman for the score. And Odessa, classic. Classic Odessa. So here we go. That's your phrase. Yep. You're sticking with yeah, it. Are, are they going to do another classic Odessa thing here? With 220, mm. with 214 left to go. Montana Flynn dropping back. He's got some time. Fires it up the middle. It's going to be a first down. They're going to give it to him. That's Brock Skinner. Second and eight. Here is Flynn. Going to pick up the first down. He's going to draw a face mask penalty. So they're going to get extra yardage after that. So good thing for Odessa right now. Third and nine. And a little handoff here to Logan Sweeney, who's going to bust there off go, of man. two guys. With a stiff arm. So you guys saw Julio Jones' stiff arm last night, I did or on Thursday, which I'll talk about in a minute because it actually wasn't that impressive. Oh, he, McLeod was actually tackling. Well, no, his momentum was carrying him away from Julio. All right, but, but here we yeah, go. Touchdown, Logan Sweeney at the very end of the game. Odessa State with 14 seconds. They get the ball into the end zone. No need to kick the field goal. However, San Diego State does have time with – Three timeouts. This is not classic Odessa right here. This is a little bit different. They got a different attitude this year. I like what we're, we're seeing out of them. So here we go. Can we go deep? Oh, oh good okay, play. Okay, it's okay. Play. All right, so not, not classic Odessa now. Five seconds left here. Second and ten. One more shot. Oh. Maybe. Maybe. One second now. Oh. If they just held him. Let's see what we got, Chapman. He's throwing deep. Oh, okay, going to the sideline. Oh my! You know we're out. Oh no! no! Catch him! What? Catch him! Come no. on! Why did he get in? Down at the one. One yard, yard line. line. There we go. We survived. Odessa State survives. How does that even happen? 
Classic Odessa no more. I'm officially retiring that catchphrase. I'm done saying it. Yeah, that was wild because, I mean, there's four open, there's like four open guys. And we get the tackle at the very end. I mean, look how close that was for uh, Goolsby. Like, makes the tackle crazy. All right, guys, amazing action, amazing finishes for week number two. It's finally in the books. All right, so let's take a look at some box scores here. Midland State against Kansas, 35-21. to Yeah, Midland over Kansas. A lot of offense here. Both teams eclipsed the 400-yard benchmark. Uh, looks like Kansas got the ground game going with Matthews. But let's see what C.J. Wicks had in store here. That was Dirty. a pretty good game right there. Not too much in the way of running the football. Claudio Keller. And they really spread the love around there. Uh, touchdowns are Vargas, Swift, Keller, and Win. I'm looking so. at that Barrow. Three receptions for 98. So he definitely made his receptions count. You guys saw this game. Odessa State wins on a one yard away Yeah, that down. was crazy. Um, you know, defense kind of stepped up a little bit when they needed to. Still gave up some some big plays obviously but the completion percentage for montana flynn really good there 84 the percent 62 yards rushing for montana flynn maybe a little bit more effort being put into running the football this year logan sweeney 11 catches denver obliterates utah state i see holly's name oh all yeah over the place. 262 yards of rushing it's just it just doesn't stop guys yeah look makovich goes four of four for 132 and a touchdown timmons Threw the ball 12 times, which is a lot for him. But he gets two scores through the air, which is, you know, a little bit different for him. Atari Scroggins gets the majority of the carries, 96 and 2. But two touchdowns and eight carries for Jarkus Holly. You got to love that touchdown per carry percentage there for Jarkus Holly. So Timmons did not light it up in the box score on the ground this week. Still got that Heisman campaign. Still kicking in gear. You know they probably lo they probably watched ACU and were thinking to themselves, it's Utah State. Okay, we're not gonna push Drakeen and Timmons because he he does rush a lot. So like you yeah. said, he has a lot of passing, not a lot of passing attempts, but a lot more in this game. It's probably due to the fact that you know, they don't want him handling the football a whole lot. You might be on something. Don't want to get him hurt. Yes, Kansas A&M beats South Florida. No team scored in the fourth quarter. Camu gets the field goal in overtime. I got this one wrong. Can't really tell what happened there. It must have been a missed field goal for South Florida because there's no turnovers. Um, ugly passing for South Florida, or you could say good defense. I'm going to go with good defense. But we look at Mitchum, 8 of 24 in two scores. So two of his eight completions were for touchdowns. One to go. Uh, no, that's a rushing to yeah, Golston. Negative nine. For Mitchum, yeah, on the I got sacked too. a lot. Golston did pick up some pretty good yardage there. I see Dontari Weeks with the two touchdowns. So Camu in their opener gets on the board. Ooh, look at Shreve! Let's check out the Shreve, and let's see this. Kid. You guys are gonna like this. Oh, <laughs> look at that! Four sixty. What is that? On the ground, no turnovers for either team. Let's see what they did here. Laduka with only 15 passes. I want to see Why? Wingo. Wingo, 35 carries. For 269. Three touchdowns. Tate chips in with 100 and a score. Uh, man. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. What did you just say? Tate chips in for 101 <laughs> yards? Yeah. Dude, he'd had half the work, and he had as good as a normal workload for a running back would have. Yeah, Shreveport, About 17 to 20 Shreveport carries. Just dominant this game. We know in the trenches, uh, Shreveport is something to uh, Dude. contend with. So okay. okay, it's either Andre Wingo is an absolute beast and he can handle it, or it's I don't know what they're doing to this kid. They may ruin his pro his pro career. Well, we'll see what this. they do. Well, you know, we'll we'll look at the games next week. We'll see what they do. They got kind of another tune up before. They play Alabama. Maybe he won't get that many touches next right. week. Right. But here's a Broken Arrow. They get the W over Monroe. I see four turnovers for the Warhawks. Uh, Tyrone Godot did get the start. He threw for a 155 and three. Brian Street goes over two. 
Hmm. So Godot does have the job right now. We're waiting to see if Street can kind of make a push. But, I mean, if they're winning... If they're winning, you, you have to stick with Godot. Right, so Tremaine Chapman gets 74 and a touchdown. You see the receivers here. Anton Hardum with two scores. And Nathan Rowe picks up a touchdown. Maybe Broken Arrow can throw the ball a little bit better this year. I, I don't know if that... This with the case or not. with Snyder's backing out to baseball, then yeah, it makes sense. Could be Amarillo knocks off New Mexico. This is a game that I really thought New Mexico would keep it really close. Springer plays okay. Rayshon Beckham with a hundred yards. Springer does pick up three scores on the ground. I'm liking this offense a lot more this year. Yeah, I mean they didn't look that good last week, but I mean it's good to see the defense rebound too. Uh, run defense in particular, too, against a team like New Mexico. ACU kind of handles Wake Forest. You know, wasn't the best game in the world, but they do put up 524 yards. I'd so, say it's pretty good. Yeah, look at Stoudemire's numbers, 316 with three. Does throw two picks. And then look at that. What do you think about Stoudemire on the ground? Uh, you know, he's just a dynamic player. He's going to make plays with his arm and his legs. It's just that he has never played in actual uh, games right? In the, at the college we're... level until this season. So he is going to have the turnover bug. Could be. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of the defense being able to pick him up yeah. in order to get the job done. But, you know, eventually we'll have to see how this is going to play out. But just keep your eye out for Stoudemire's turnover issues how about Kirk, this though? Like, man, he looks like he's got a connection going with Dude, uh, Kirk. Yeah, it's Kirk and Mitchell, but I don't see... Okay, so Mitchell's got one reception for eights. But, yeah, Kirk is like the guy for him. Yeah. 14 catches. He did a, He did the heavy lifting. His Jan sport got heavy. Yeah, look at his yak here. He's 90. carrying him. Pretty good stuff. Uh, let's check out the defense. Uh, let's see if anything of note <clears throat> happened here. Any sacks? You got Schema Jones with half sack. Armandaras. That's it for sacks, no INTs, and a lot of tackles for Kennedy. That's quite a bit. No defensive touchdowns. I still love this, bringing the hammer and the pain. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, we did see NC State McAllen. We know the numbers there. Kind of an epic collapse here for the Matadors. Rodriguez, though, did really put up some <laughs> yards. So 37 completions. Crap. Like, put that into perspective for a second like he had to complete he completed a pass at the college football level 37 times it's quite a bit that's that's a, i mean he had a great game yeah but you know again the defense just did not come through and for us more for us yeah i mean shanahan he's got some turnover issues two interceptions he was kind of forcing some throws in that game uh only 17 of 27 so i wouldn't call that a very good performance but it was okay Good enough for the win. Yeah, and then we spread the ball around pretty well here, but again, it's basically Foreman and Hardaway as the two top receivers. And we got Kevin Tratnick made his two receptions count for 23 yards and a score. All right, now this is a game that we hyped up a little bit, kind yep. of not due to the opponent per se, but just kind of that quarterback situation that we were following. And look at the total offense discrepancy. 546 to 170, yet the game was only decided by 20. So what happens here, we uh, were in super sim mode here, and Bollinger was put in the game to start. Did not really move the football too well. Rivers comes in. They move the football with ease, but they're stalling out on the red zone. Yeah, Picked a lot of steel goals. Just a natural occurrence, though. But they yeah, de but really depended on Isaiah Green. You're right. But Rivers, I think, really separated himself from Bollinger in, you know, a small sample size, granted. But but if you're Bollinger, if you got the start, you needed to take that next step. You're playing Eastern Michigan. Right. Like, you had to be able to move the football, and he just didn't. Right. So a lot of field goals you see here. Uh, they did get an Isaiah Green with a touchdown, but they did not really get too much on the ground. But then Rivers played the second quarter, and you see they got in the red zone a couple times, get those field goals. Rivers played the third quarter as well, led that touchdown drive right there. So, I think Rivers kind of won the won the job, but I mean, we'll see how it shakes out. All right, guys. Now let's check out the Week Three action preview here. 
We'll have, again, more extensive preview on the Wednesday videos, but we'll just really quickly get you guys prepped for these games. All right, so McAllen needs a bounce back in a big way at Houston. Uh, we did fast forward to week three, so these are updated rankings. You, you guys can probably tell McAllen did not get hurt too much with that loss against another top 10 team. They only dropped the 12, so they're still doing okay. Louisiana is going to go at Little Rock. I think Rivers will start this one. Yeah. And we'll see what happens. Uh, we're going to have UNLV, who, man, let's see who they beat. They beat a solid team. They beat Arizona. On Only by three. Yeah, but that's a win. It's still a win. That's a win against a Power 5 team or Power 6 team in our dynasty. UNLV, though, they're going to go at Millen. Millen's looking pretty good on offense. I think it'd be nice to see if they can really handle them. Tulane. We'll see who, let's see who they've beaten here. They beat Western Kentucky and Vanderbilt. So this is not a team to be taken lightly here. And we saw Tulane knock off Odessa State last year. And, you know, they had a pretty solid running game. So this will be an interesting matchup yeah. here. Yeah, if they, if they can rely on Wingo some more, I mean, that's the only, really the only way that they're going to be able to pull off Ws is yeah. with Wingo, on the back of Wingo. So we'll just see how they ride the Wingo but, wave. You know, but you got to think. They play Bama next week, the week after this. He's got to be ready. You got to save him. Okay, Pittsburgh at Broken Arrow. Very evenly matched game, I think. They played FCS Southeast, shut them out. I don't know. I mean, it's a total coin it's, flip game. It really is to me, too. It just depends on who starts. If they go with the two quarterback system in this game, I don't know if they can win this. They got to be able to stick with one guy. I think it's going to have to be Godot. I think you're right. Now, Vanderbilt's going to go at Ardmore. We talked about Vanderbilt dropping that game to two, or uh, they lost to Tulane. Yep. So, this is a game I think you should handle. Uh, yeah, I mean, we should have handled the game against Temple. And we should have handled the game against Georgia Tech. Yeah, you seem to find a way to play down to your non conference competition. Odessa State going to go at UTEP. Odessa State. Probably very solid favorites in this game, even though it's a road test. Camu at Kansas. Okay, <laughs> the Kansas about, battle. Talked about Kansas uh, last week against Midland State. This will be a very interesting game. I mean, Kansas is not a pushover in this dynasty. Yeah, but it's, you know, Kansas a and very physical. You're, you're right. I think they should do it. We get Northern Illinois... Coming off of a bad season by their standards, you know, usually one of the top programs in the MAC, and you know, Nebraska State, we usually play a MAC team every year. This is Northern Illinois. That's year. where you should be in the MAC. Maybe. I'm just kidding. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> so it doesn't make sense for Mid America though. Yeah. So, but look at this. Very close. Should I think this will be a very close game? You know, Northern Illinois. They usually got like an opportunistic defense. Yeah. Offense is kind of one-dimensional. Your logos are looking the same way, and you have NSU under the guy, and then you have NIU under the guy. Yeah. So is this kind of like your – do you really look up to Northern Illinois or something? They're one of my like, favorite teams. That's probably where the inspiration came. Yeah, here. they should fire Rod <laughs> Carey, by the way. Guy is holding them back. Yeah, it's very uh, um, bad offense. ACU at Missouri. This might be our uh, little – Teaser game number four, perhaps. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. It is a top 25 matchup. ACU's got to go on the road, play an SEC team, although I don't really think of them as a traditional SEC team, but it is a road game against an SEC squad, so we might have to check in there, see what ACU's got up their sleeve here. I, I think this could be a close game. Especially, I mean, Drew Locke is playing for Missouri. Yeah, and it's uh, going to be close, man. They just destroyed Indiana, so... I think that could be pretty close. Boise at Denver. Let's see, Boise gets a B minus. Again, I think Denver's just gonna smash him. I don't think anything's gonna stop him. I mean, Boise usually has that uh, that still that feel that they can pull off upsets here every now and then. Yeah, they so, they lost a little bit of the magic though over the last yeah. few years. I, well, they have I no more, no more Chris Peters. They got no mojo. And Amarillo at Nevada. Don't sleep on Nevada. I'm this not. Game. I uh, this game's yeah. I I I might even pick Nevada or Nevada. Guess we'll find out on Wednesday. You're right. You're right. And that should do it for the Big Twelve. So any final thoughts here? You can take it away. Uh, final thoughts. A recap of Week Two. 
I would pro probably say that you having a bye week is going to help you. Going to help Nebraska State really determine who is going to be the quarterback for next week. Is it going to be oh, Willis? Yeah. Is it going to be Fitzsimmons? Is it going to be Shinovsky? Yeah, Shinovsky I mean, had a lot of completions in the end zone. You're right. I don't want you guys to forget about Nebraska State because we haven't even talked about them right. in this whole video. Right. So don't sleep on us. And then I would say for a takeaway other than a team that was on a bye would probably be uh, ACU. They've got a pretty tough game coming up here against Missouri, and uh, it was a really good thing that they beat Wake Forest the way that they did. Stoudemire has to be clean in this game, and if he's not, yeah. then it could be upset central. But we'll save the deeper analysis. That was just a little, little sprinkle of little preview that we're going to have and uh, on a Wednesday. So, guys, we'll see you on Wednesday. Leave a like if you like this thing, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that little red button for a subscribe or my logo in the bottom right-hand corner. And we'll have your guys' picks updated as well on the Wednesday video. NFL Week 1 updates. Yes, and NFL Week on 1. Wednesday. So you'll see Carmichael, you'll see Bishop, you'll see Amari Manuel, you see you all these guys. Bishop. It, it just Eli depends. Manning. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of guys on a lot of teams. So, if anything, we might just show you stats, like sometimes, you know, for certain players, and then we might show you gameplay for certain players. So, we'll just see how that all plays out. Haven't decided how the format's going to be for that, but it's going to be fun. It'll be a fun Wednesday video. We'll see you guys then. Comment your picks who you have on Wednesday as well. So, I'd like to keep all your guys' selections on the Wednesday video. That way I can you know, allocate them correctly, account for them correctly. So we'll see you guys then. As always, peace.